Well, to me, forensic anthropology is the subfield of what we call physical anthropology. We physical anthropologists are the people who study fossil man, prehistoric man, and so on. Now, forensic anthropologists were trained as physical anthropologists in our university or academic careers, but uh, we are the people who apply the knowledge that we acquire on man's skeletal remains to medical legal problems. And we try to put together what I call the osteobiography of that person, which is a very brief, usually brief, life history of that person that we can develop from the evidence preserved in the skeleton. Such things as age and gender and ethnicity, stature, whether you're right or left-handed, in, in females, uh, even some idea of their gestational history, how many ch children they've had. But it has to begin at the field, and uh, it's, it's painstakingly slow but you have to trace out each skeleton and make sure that each of those bones, even the little bones of the hands and feet, stay with that particular skeleton. You know, the bones, uh, you know, they, they always tell the truth if you listen to them. They don't really talk to us, thank God. I mean, if bones ever start talking to me, I'll turn in my suit. But they, they do, they, they, they speak so softly, I always say we have to use our eyes to listen to them. Because what we, we're looking at that skeleton and we cannot afford to, to misinterpret what they tell us. The death of one person is a tragedy, but the death of a million is a statistic. In other words, focus on a victim and tell their story. Liliana Parasia, she was 21 years old, very beautiful young woman, uh, and uh, she had been pregnant. Her boyfriend was disappeared at the same time she was, and she also was a good subject because there was another practice in addition to just killing people uh, down there that was quite bishop. If they found that a woman was pregnant, they would keep her alive until she delivered the baby. And then uh, uh, after two or three days, they let her, let her keep the baby to kind of stabilize it, nurse it. The, they'd come and take, in her case, two naval officers came and took her baby away. She was returned to the detention center, and later her head was blown off with a, what they call an etaka down there. It's a shotgun, and we had to reconstruct her skull. And I could tell that she had had the child because of some uh, changes that we see in the pelvic bones of women who have recently given birth. There's some remodeling of the bone. Never forget the victim. Remember that this is not just a pile, even though, like I say, we have to maintain our objectivity. I tell students that when we're dealing with a skeleton, we're, at, we're actually dealing with the witness. They are the best witnesses we have of what happened to them.